Hello, my name is Peter Raymer. Today we're going to look at how to write an X++ select statement. Now I really love select statements. They're really neat. Um, normally in another language you'd have to write some direct SQL code to query data from a database. You'd have to return those values and then map each field to properties on a class and then you could work with that class, add methods to that class to work with the data. Whereas in X++, in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations, or in any previous version of um, AX, you can use select statements that do a lot of the work for you. In the end, you write uh, these select statements that look very similar to a T-SQL or transaction SQL statement, if you're familiar with those. Um, and then the data immediately gets loaded into a table buffer variable, which acts very much like a class that you can then use um, to manipulate and work with the data. So in this video, I'm going to cover kind of the basics. Maybe you're new to select statements, or maybe you're just not super comfortable, or you want to understand some of the differences of select statements in X++ versus SQL. So let's get started. So right now I'm already debugging a runnable class slash job. You can create your own project within Visual Studio and then right click on this project and select add new item and specify a runnable um, class parentheses job and it'll open up a form that looks like this. I named mine select statement and then it produces a main method where you can just instantly run some code by clicking the play button. So that's kind of where we're at right now and I wanted to jump into just these three lines of code and then I'll explain some more from here. So let's start with this first line of code. This first line of code is um, a line of code where we define what's called a table buffer variable or sometimes called just a table buffer or a table variable. It's essentially like any other variable like int a or string, my string, um, anything of those base data types you may be used to using. But the really cool thing is we actually have a variable that is of type the name of your table. So for instance, cuss table is part of the base product. And so all I need to do is type the word cuss table and it turns this kind of greenish blue, which indicates that it is a type that we can use. Then I can give it a name of the variable. I could call it, you know, my table buffer, or as a best practice, I'm gonna name it the same um, as the table itself. So I'm gonna call it cuss table, but with a lower case first letter is best practice. That way we know it's a variable. Um, but this is really fantastic. Normally in many other languages, you'd have to create a class that mirrors this table with properties for all of these fields um, and methods. The underlying system um, of Dynamics creates that for us kind of under the covers. So we don't need to do that. We can immediately start working with this cuss table variable that is of type cuss table. And I'll show you some more power of that in just a second. So let's get to the select statement itself. Um, there's select statements and there's while select statements in X++. While select statements are for when we want to loop through um, multiple records in a table and I'll cover those in a different article and video. Um, in this one we're looking at select statements and select statements are really usually designed to select a single record um, from a table and we'll get into that. So here um, the way we write this syntax is I start with the word select and again that tells the system that we want to retrieve some data from the database. Then I can use this character star, which is similar to transaction SQL or T-SQL if you've used that, which tells the system I want to select all of the fields in the table. Then I need to tell it what table I want to uh, retrieve data from. So I'm going to use the word from. And then normally, and this is where it gets a little confusing. Normally in transaction SQL, I would use the name of the table, but in X++ select statements, I need, I need to use the name 
of the variable. So in this case, the name of my variable is cus table. So it's the same, but I might have named it, you know, my table buffer, in which case I should have, I need to use my table buffer here. Maybe I call it cus table local um, or cus table one and cus table two. I could name it whatever I need it to. I need to use that same variable name here. The cool thing is that the system knows that this variable is of type cus table, and so it can infer which table to query the data from. But it's important to know that this is the name of the variable and not the name of the table. Okay, so after running these two lines of code, what I can do is I can hover over this cus table variable. I'll hover over it, you know, this one. Um, and IntelliSense will then show me all of the properties that are in this table buffer variable. And this is where it gets really cool. So um, all with that single couple lines of code, the system has loaded all the values of this particular record into this table buffer variable. So I can see the value of the account num field. If I scroll down, I can see other values. There's gonna be a lot that are blank or null, but I can see currency um, and many other things. So that's really powerful. Usually this would require you know, a lot more code to do the mapping. And then finally, what I can do is info out um, using an info statement, the value that's in this table buffer variable just using this syntax right here, cus table dot account num. So again, really, really powerful. It allows me to read out um, the values that are in this table buffer. I can use these values in if statements or other methods, um, as well as use these table buffers to insert, update, and delete records. Um, but I'll get into that a little later. So on this table buffer, more than just the fields, I can actually see methods that I can run on this as well. Um, and so that's just really powerful um, that we can then run high level language code on a table buffer. That makes it a lot easier for us to focus on, okay, what do we wanna do with this data and spend less time on mapping the data. All right, I'm gonna hit stop right now um, on this. Um, maybe I'll hit F5 just so you can see the results. I, I think I ran too long, um, but normally it would print out the results from the info log. But I'm gonna hit stop right now and then I explain a couple more best practices um, around uh, select statements. So let's look at this next set of code. I'm gonna uncomment this and I'll comment out my first statement. So this was kind of my first example. Oops, now we want to get to my second example and explain a little bit more. So in the first example, we selected fields from the cus table, but we didn't really tell it which record it should select. So the system's just going to find the first one it can find and, and stop there. That's not usually very helpful. So what we need to add is a WHERE clause. A WHERE clause is essentially a filter, um, just like you might filter a grid. Um, a WHERE clause is a filter that tells it, okay, which specific record in this table um, should we be loading and retrieving? Um, so in this case, I say WHERE, and then I use that same table buffer variable again, not the name of the table, but the name of the variable, dot the field that I wanna filter, and then I say equals equals, and then the value that I wanna use. If you have a variable, you could put that here, or, or in this case, I'm hard coding a value for this example. When I do this, the system is gonna search this entire um, cus table and find the, in this case, one record where the account num is equal to this value. Then I can print it out. So again, that's kind of what where clauses do. These are really powerful um, and are important to use. Let's look at the next example here. I'm gonna take this statement just a little bit further. So one important concept to know about when writing select statements is it something called a field list. So, so far we've used this star character to select all of the fields on our table but we can actually list out 
the fields that we want to select. It wouldn't make sense for us to select and list out all 200 fields that are on CUS table. Um, but if we know our code really only needs to read a couple fields or a few fields on this table, we can use a field list to improve performance of this search. So instead of, again, retrieving data on this record for 200 fields on this table, I think there are, um, there we can just specify we really only need the account num and the cus group and we can display those out that's going to make our query perform a lot faster there's a lot of times where you shouldn't use a field list maybe you're passing this table buffer variable into another method and you shouldn't assume what that other method what, what data that other method needs so in that case it's always kind of safer to start with um, that star and then maybe only later change to a field list. But this is a good best practice to improve the performance of your queries and every little bit helps. Okay, let's look at the next example. So I'll comment this out and then I'll uncomment my next section here. So we looked at field lists and we looked at the star syntax. There's actually a second way that we can select all of the fields on a table. We can just say select cus table. So we don't actually need the star from part if we're going to select all of the fields on the table. And this is actually the preferred way to write this. It's a few less words. It's a little bit more readable. If you look at all the other Microsoft code, you're going to see it written this way. And you shouldn't really see a star um, used in the system, even though that is supported. So we just say select cus table. And it's implied in this case that we want to read all of the fields on this record and load them into this table buffer. Um, so that's uh, a little different than if you're using transaction SQL. And so that's um, just a good thing to know. What we're talking about differences between transaction SQL, I wanted to point out a couple other things. In transaction SQL, you might just write account num equals and the name of your field. In X plus plus select statements, we need to always use the name of our table buffer every time that we're referring to a field. So we do the name of our table buffer variable dot the name of our field to refer to it. Then instead of using a single equal statement in X plus plus select statements, we use two equal statements. You'll get a compile error if you just use one, but that may trip you up if you're used to writing SQL code um, in transaction SQL. And then lastly, if we have a hard-coded string like this um, in transaction SQL, you would actually use a single quote like that um, for all of your values in X++. You can use a single quote, but it's a best practice to use um, a double quote like this. Again, usually you're going to use a variable instead of a hard-coded variable uh, or a hard-coded value here. Um, but if you do have a hard-coded value, you would want to use um, double quotes like this. All right, let's move on to our next example. And so there is a lot more to know about select statements. This is a very basic introduction that hopefully um, lets you see how these work. Um, but, and, and along with that, there's a lot of different things you can do with select statements. There's a lot of keywords. You can use joins and order buys and group buys and aggregates and all of those hopefully I'll be able to cover in another video. But there's one keyword that I wanted to call out because it's very important to these basic um, select statements. And the keyword is first only. So kind of this last iteration of the select statement, I say select first only cus table. And what that does is it tells the system to go find one record, the very first record it can find that meets this criteria, and then stop, stop looking. Whereas without this first only um, keyword, the system is actually gonna go through all of the records on the table, seeing if they match this criteria. And only once it's gone through all of them is it gonna return the results back to us in the code here. Whereas if we use this first only, um, it's similar to saying select 
top one if you're familiar with T-SQL, um, but essentially it tells the system to stop looking. And this isn't a required thing, um, but it's a best practice because it's going to dramatically improve our performance if we can t tell the system, no, we're only looking for one record. And almost all the time when we're writing select statements, we're looking for a single record. And so we want to use this first only keyword. And another video, again, we'll, you, we'll look at while select statements, where we do want to look for many records and loop through them in a table. But when we're writing a select statement, most of the time we really are only looking for a single record. And then we can print out the account num, we can print out cus group or any other fields we'd want as well. So again, that covers the basics of select statements in X++. Hopefully you learned something new. I think they're incredibly powerful and really, really nice that um, we can retrieve data from the database quickly and map it to a class-like object that we don't have to build ourselves, but directly mirrors the cus table objects we've created in, or, or the table objects we've created in the AOT. If you've got your own table, you can use that as well. Um, and that's just incredibly powerful. This is really, really nice within X++. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.